So just to review energy, it's the capability to produce effort and it cannot be created or destroyed, but it can be stored. And a lot of this focus in the presentation is gonna be storing it in a body and how it can be transferred. So just another heat review, the form of energy that's transferred across the boundary of a system at a given temperature to another system at a lower temperature, because one of the main ways our body transfers energy is through heat, especially when we sweat or work out and stuff like that. These are just some old heat transfer equations. They're not really that relevant, but like, Okay, so this is how heat is going to relate to thermo and energy in the body. So the food, mo food molecules have heat energy generated through molecular motion, but they also store potential energy. And those are the chemical bonds in the proteins, fats, and carbohydrates, and even in alcohol. And then that stored heat energy we measure as calories. And actually when you put it on the, when you read the nutrition facts, it's actually in kilocalories, but we refer to it as calories. So what is a calorie? It's a unit of heat energy. It's the, uh, how much it takes to heat one gram of water one degree Celsius. And each food has a different amount of potential energy. And there's three, the three basic food groups, proteins, carbs, and fats, and they each store a different amount of potential energy. And the way we burn them can be affected by a lot of different things, including our age, our gender, our activity, our body composition, uh, size, pregnancy, a lot of stuff like that. And so burning calories, your body uses energy to produce every daily function, just pumping your blood, breathing. We burn calories even if we're doing nothing. And during exercise, our muscles contract, which causes the formation and breakdown of ATP, which burns more calories, because uh, we need energy to contract the muscles. And so that's why we burn more calories when we exercise and we contract our muscles more. Thermogenesis is the production of heat, and what we're gonna be talking about it is the production of heat in the human body. And there's three types. There's the work-induced thermogenesis, the regulatory thermogenesis, and the diet-induced thermogenesis. Um, diet-induced means we need more energy to break down the food we eat. So this is like focusing on the regulatory thermogenesis. Basically in our bloodstream, uh, and we have the energy. And then so when we get hot, our blood vessels dilate, and that gives more surface area for the heat to be released. And then when we're cold, it'll constrict and there's less surface area for heat to be released. And that's also shivering. When our muscles contract a lot, it uses energy and creates heat. And then, so the regulatory one has a lot to do with your BMR. It's how many calories you burn, like doing nothing if you're just sitting around all day. Um, it's affected by a lot of things, including age, sex, size. And as you can see, men, their weight and height affect the amount of calories they burn more than women, but also it decreases more than age for us. So I did a sample calculation for me, but you have to convert your weight from pounds to kilograms and your height from inches to centimeters, and then you use your age. So for me, at 110 pounds, 67 inches, and 22 years old, I burn 1,341 calories every day if I did nothing. But then if you exercise, you do have to increase that. And that's why you can eat in deficit or you can eat more if you're trying to lose or gain weight. And then diet-induced, um, this is a study I found where they used respiration, I don't really know how, but to calculate how much energy the body was using. And at each of the arrows was the time of day when they allowed the people to eat a meal. And as you can see, the energy their body used spikes because uh, thermogenesis needs to increase to be able to process that food and digest it. So the diet-induced thermogenesis has a lot to do with the type of food you eat. In carbs and proteins, there's four calories stored of energy per gram, and then fat has a lot more energy stored, so that's why it takes more to burn. So proteins, uh, food fills with proteins breaks down into amino acids, which are distributed to the tissues. That's why a lot of times when you're working out, you're breaking down the muscles, you wanna eat protein to help uh, reassemble the cells and muscles. And then carbs, they're broken down into glucose, which our body uses for energy, so that's why a lot of people carb load before a run or something like that to get energy. And it can also be converted into glycogen and stored for later. And then fats are broken down into fatty acids and monoglycid, I can't say that word, and that can also be used for energy or building muscle, but it also depends on if you eat healthy fats or unhealthy fats. And that's why uh, exercise is really important for burning calories, because like we mentioned earlier, the movement of your muscles and the contraction and expansion really burns more calories. And also with heat, when your body gets hot and you sweat, that's like you're burning a lot more calories. And that's why a lot of people have been focusing on the HIIT workouts, 
um, the high intensity and the amount of energy increases, and it also puts your body in an oxygen deficit. And we talked about how just regular sitting through the day, your body needs to burn calories to um, produce oxygen. So when you're in oxygen deficit, you have to recover for a longer period of time. So you continue burning calories long after your workout's over, just because your body needs more oxygen. And these are my resources.